Hello friends, this is Lee Alexander, and it's once again time for Lo-Fi Let's Play. Um, I know it hasn't been the best week for some of us, um, and it might not be the ideal time to want to play games, but for me, old video games are a nostalgic and soothing place, um, and sometimes the ways that they don't make sense are, are comforting when the world is, is in a state such as the one it's in. Um, let's go to a primitive little world where we can be heroes together for just a little bit. Um, we're going to be playing the Alpine Encounter. Um, it's an astonishingly primitive game. Um, if you're paying attention to some of the years um, of the games that we look at, this one is 1985, but um, if you'd asked me to, to date it, I would have probably guessed 1982. Um, uh, the publisher is Random House, if I haven't said that already, and here we are outside the exclusive Swiss resort Alpenhof facing north. You see the ski slopes in the distance. Now, right off the bat, I'm going to say that, uh, you know, oh, it's 9 o'clock a.m. There's nothing more sinister, is there, friends, than when a game tells you what time it is. That tells you right away that, um, you know, time is going to be a mechanic. Um, you can always rely on looking at our inventory first as a reliable first move. We know we have a wallet, uh, generally that enables to enables us, the player, to buy things. And just typing that one move, we can see it's now 9.01 a.m. Great. Um, let's say we visit the ski resort. Wouldn't we all like to just go to a ski resort now at the minute? Um, unfortunately, I haven't been able to find any manuals for this game. Um, I have found walkthroughs. Um, and anything that we might ordinarily do um, is, is not possible in this game. It doesn't have uh, visible items. It doesn't have uh, a conversation system. Um, it don't, luckily, it only will cause time to pass if you do a move that works. Um, and I, I played this game, and at first I found it really frustrating. I'm, you know, wandering around a giant resort as time passes with no idea of my objective and, and no conventional understanding of the parser. Um, you know, it can be scary when things don't make the kind of sense um, that we think they're going to make, and, and we don't know how to find the solution. Um, but the more I learned about this game, uh, the more I began to love it. And... Uh, you know, it could just be the state of mind that I'm in right now, but hopefully you'll you'll get to share that with me too. So now we're at the front hall of the ski resort. Um, at the registration desk facing north, you see an energetic man, the manager. Um, talk man? Talk energetic man? <laughs> what do you mean? Um, this game is almost comical in, in how little it cares about what I want to tell it. Um, but, you know, what else is new in games today, friends, right? Um, we're going to have a happy time, so let's try to look at the energetic man. Um, you see nothing of interest. Okay, well, why don't we register at the desk? And uh, we're given a registration form, so uh, I'm going to put my real name in as much as, you know, that might not be as, as good a policy in, in the future. So, uh, you know, they're always watching us. So let's say, uh, yeah. <laughs> and I've given uh, my sex as female, and the manager has given me a key. Yeah, Herr Cloutier has checked out. You have his room, room number six. So if you're playing along with your adventure pad at home, friends, you, you might want to write that down. Um... Let's, uh, let's head this way. Um, I've started to explore a little bit of this hotel before you all got here, but um, after a while I began to learn it's kind of funny when I get lost and, and time passes helplessly. Newspapers are sold here. You see a clerk. Hi, clerk. Let's talk to the clerk. Ich bin Swiss and sprechen little English. Um, something seems off to that about me, off about that to me, but let's buy a newspaper. Okay, it's now uh, 9.13 a.m. as we read the newspaper in the lobby of the Swiss ski resort into which we've just checked in with a, with a wallet and a fresh start, um, Alpine Zeitung English Edition. Reliable sources report that a priceless Chinese vase was stolen from the Art for Peace collection scheduled to tour the U.S. this month. An international crime syndicate known only as Vodak may be responsible, say investigators. Officials say uh, U.S.-Chinese relations may break down completely if the vase is not recovered. Wow, it doesn't, doesn't take much, does it, friends? A uh, report from the Swiss police reveals 
but the search for the vase is centered on a small ski resort. Wow, we too are in a small ski resort. Uh, an interceptive, intercepted radio transmission from that resort indicates that the vase may be hidden there. So we do know that we're looking for a vase, um, and that's about all we know. And it's now 914, so uh, there are some uh, radio transmissions and agencies involved. Um, but when I am in a resort and you tell me that the uh, pool is nearby, um, so can't <laughs> said that the pool is east, but that I can't go that way. Uh, interestingly enough, um, I keep getting distracted by my objective of saving the world when I play this game by, you know, wanting to do the things that vacationers do. Uh, let's visit the pool. Um, I find it, again, this game is really funny because I'll, I'll give you a spoiler right away. You can complete it in the first dozen moves if you know what you're meant to do. And uh, I have done, but uh, that sort of ending is, is not very satisfying. And um, because the parser is so limited, um, it's kind of tough to tell uh, what this game wants you to do. So, oh, the swimming room looks, the swimming pool looks inviting today. The men's locker room is to the north. Um, so you could try going for a swim. Your clothes would get wet. Um, could we remove our clothes or undress? You might get arrested if you do that here. Okay, so um, women are not allowed. Oh, who is this? Um, someone walked in. The uh, the disc is, is spinning slowly. A character is puffing his pipe. Good morning, Lee. And uh, uh, because I pressed enter in my startlement, I don't even uh, realize what this inspector here uh, said to me. So that's... Another sign of how cruel and uh, primitive this game is. Let's speak to the inspector. It wasn't very clear you're telling me. Well, let's see. What other places can we go? Um, attempting to have a life of leisure. We're by the pool. The sauna's to the south. The ladies' locker room is to the north. Okay, let's go. Uh, we found the locker room where we can undress. <laughs> can we open a locker? No, it doesn't know what we mean. You're in your bathing suit. Don't catch cold. Nice. So, you know, despite the fact that we've ignored the instructions of the inspector and we've already sort of forgotten our mission, perhaps now we could go for a relaxing swim. Uh, nothing like swimming at a ski resort. You swim a, a few laps and climb out of the pool. Uh, that passed about 20 minutes of time. So uh, what do you say we go and put our clothes back on? Um, oh, you see a seductive woman. Wow. I would like to look at her. Um, hello, seductive woman. You see nothing of interest. You know, a lot of things can distract us from the mission, friends, right? Um, what is her deal? <laughs> I guess we can't talk or greet or otherwise examine the seductive woman. It's a shame. Uh, and now she's gone. <laughs> so it's really interesting, actually, that... Um, this hotel has, you know, for 1985, you are again decent, it says. Wow, it wouldn't do to be indecent when, when there's a war on with their friends. Um, don't want to pass time in the sauna. Let's, let's continue exploring. Um, here she is again. Um, I can listen. Nothing but the wind. Talk. Wow. I don't know... Uh, you know, I find it almost poetic how frustrating this game is, um, that I don't know what I'm here for, and um, I don't know what we're supposed to be achieving, but um, I constantly feel the tension of time passing and the importance of the mission, and the desire I have to just break the system, or to explore, or to do something self-indulgent, like uh, buy skis. <laughs> we're at a ski resort, right, friends? Why not, why not try to have a good time? Let's buy some boots. And we can also um, buy some poles. And now we know that uh, if anything happens, we are prepared. Um, friends, do you remember what hotel room uh, we're meant to be staying uh, in? Because let's try to find out if we can get there. Um, the stairs are behind you. So now we've found a sort of underground area. The Tudor Tower is actually a stairwell. There's actually a huge storage crate. Could we open the crate? No. <laughs> Look, crate. You see the corpse of Winston Sinclair. 
goodness, who's Winston Sinclair? See, uh, logic is seeming to fold upon itself here at the uh, this Alpenhof Resort. Um, I, I think we should just leave that there, maybe? Um, huff, puff, you climb the stairs. This is the top of the tower stairs. Okay. There's nowhere else to go besides north. Um, we're in the upstairs front hall, facing south. And uh, again, you know that we usually have a lot of uh, directional rules that can be relied upon at, at times like this. Um, when we are uh, exploring unusual places. Uh, but in this case, uh, it seems to like to choose to face you in completely different directions. Ooh, a lady's room. We can go in there, we know, because I told them that I'm a lady. Um, a European hotel. Few rooms have private hotel. Oh, I see. So we, despite the amount of money that we've paid to stay here at the Alpenhof, um, you know, we have to do, do a public bathroom. Let's continue on east. I'm, uh, I'm actually a bit lost, friends, aren't you? Uh, a door to the ladies' room. Guest room 55, is that us? The door is locked. We might be 56. Okay, uh, maybe further down the hall? Let's see. Guest room 57. The door is unlocked, so 56 should be ours. Nope. Um, one of these. Do you think this is going to be our hotel room, friends? Ah, yes. Look at this beautiful illustration. They sure were trying hard. In fact, there are a, a number of fresh alpine colors in use. So white, orange, green, and of course that lovely sky blue. Do you find your accommodations comfortable? There is a door on the south wall to an adjoining room. Uh, what about the closet? Look in the closet. You see nothing of interest. Look, suitcase. Open suitcase. Something looks like a suitcase. Let's continue exploring, should we, friends? Ah, now here's a modest room. Uh, you see a handbag. Could we open the handbag? <laughs> Wasn't very clear. What about... Look, handbag. Again, this game doesn't even have the the basic verbs that we're accustomed to from more primitive games. You know, you think that when time passes, progress will occur, but sometimes you find yourself, you know, with the same primitive vocabulary that you expect that you should have left behind before. Um, can we read the note? Uh, at least this will work. I'll try not to press anything. Ma petite Renee, please keep our bundle of joy safe until half past eight. We shall be off to a new life of luxury. Okay? You're a clever Frenchman. Uh, so we know that this is the room of a Mr. Clouseau, so that must be the Frenchman to whom we're referring. But uh, thus far, this is all the logic I can piece together. So we know, we can guess maybe that the forbidden vase is being held by someone called Renee. Um, I wonder if Renee was the seductive woman, or if there are a number of, of people who... Uh, who traverse this hotel, um, making little sense as they go. Uh, I don't think there's a point in exploring the other guest rooms. Um, let's just go back a second, because it looked to me like one of those doors was open. Um, it's, yeah, see, it's hard to tell how much we can rely on this. Uh, yeah, you can't go that way. The artwork is unreliable. We're in what appears to be a very peaceful and, and progressive location. Um, however, the logic is just you know, unexpectedly primitive and strange. Um, we see a tram up ahead. What do you think that going north should get us there? How do you feel about going skiing, friends? Now that we have, have bought uh, a bunch of different things, we've gone swimming, we've followed some strangers around, we've raided some bedrooms. I, I've not yet figured out what it's all for, have you? Um, here we go, continuing onward. Um, the tram lobby is north. Uh, we won't be allowed in the men's room. It's interesting. I wonder if it makes a difference to the gameplay what you decide your, your sex is or your gender. Um, you're in the tram, lo tram lobby facing north. You see the snack bar to the west. Oh, a gift shop. Don't we like gift shops, friends? A merry distraction on this alpine vacation from the much more serious mission at hand. Oh, it's toys and gifts. The shop sells lovely vases. Um... We could buy a replacement vase. No. Uh, 
talk to clerk. Nope. We know that there's there's not a lot of, of interactions that we can have. We can buy a gift, maybe. Okay. So we now have a gift. Let's see what a key and a wallet. Um so it said that we bought a gift, but Oh, a gift. Okay. A ski, a newspaper, some boots, and poles. Well done, friends. We now have a gift for somebody special. Uh, we don't know for whom. Oh, you see a blonde woman. Let's see. Look, blonde woman. You see a backpack. Renee's skis. Wow. Okay. Um, this could be Renee uh, if she's carrying Renee's skis. Um, give gift. Follow Renee. <laughs> well, a fat man enters. Well, I mean, why do you have to judge him on his body type? It's unfair. So, uh, a blonde woman heads to the north. Let's follow Renee because she is probably carrying the vase inside that backpack. I, I have a suspicion that she is. You see, uh, oh, and now the other man is gone. I don't know what all of these people and things mean. Uh, read sign. Akhtung, you must have a tram pass. Let's take Renee's backpack. <laughs> okay. <laughs> South. Let's, uh, let's check out the backpack. You see a vase? Well, we found the vase, huh? Um, let's call the inspector. Um, I have to let on that I did sort of find out this. Um, the inspector arrives puffing his pipe again, and uh, I'm afraid to press any buttons, friends. I don't want you to miss all this thrillingly written story. The inspector reclaims the backpack and the antique, antique vase in it. He commends you on your good judgment in not handling the fragile piece with its hidden code. He wonders to himself whether the Vodak leaders will ever be caught. You return to headquarters and receive commendation for finding the missile plans before they were sold to the terrorists. The game for now is overly. I see. Flip the disc and press any key. I can do that. How about that? See what happens. So this is what I mean. Um, all we did was happen to be uh, in the right place at the right time when Renee was passing through the area. And uh, we were able to just take the vase right off her back with no argument. It's a strange world here that the world of the Alpine encounter, but um, you know, obviously we we didn't stop the clandestine organization. We uh, you know didn't manage to discover any of the hidden codes. Um, but you know, there's a lot more we can do. Uh, I'm gonna uh, actually uh, load an earlier save for you so that uh, we can see some more uh, things. And if you want to try this game for yourself, I'm using Apple II emulator for Windows. There's just been a new version. Uh, that came out thanks to 4AM for letting me know about that and for all their work um, doing beautiful cracks of Apple games just like this one. Um, so here is a blonde woman and the manager. We know this is Renee, but um, perhaps we should just kind of follow Renee for now. Look, Renee. You see a backpack and some luggage. She's carrying all, her, all of her ski equipment. So this is a, a different point in the timeline. I think during our last game, at this point, we were uh, undressing in the ladies' room in front of a seductive woman and, and swimming in the pool. I personally would probably enjoy that a lot more than um, all of this business about government organizations and missile codes. I just want to enjoy the ski resort. So um, if we wait, um, I'm just waiting for Renee to leave so that we can follow her. Okay, she heads to the west. See if we can find her. Just following Renee. Oh, I guess we uh, might have lost her. Let's head to the restaurant. Perhaps we could enjoy a nice meal. Um, again, this game is clearly primitive and, and terribly designed. But um, <laughs> oh, here's Renee. You hear people talking softly. Listen. Renée Fauché is talking to France Cloutier. She whispered, Bonjour, France. I shall see you for lunch, oui? So we know maybe to check back in the restaurant at lunchtime. You know, I do sort of love how the seeds of a sort of almost Last Express-style time-oriented mystery 
are kind of scattered around this primitive world. So as I was saying, well, it is, is broken in, in several very obvious ways. Um, can we order some food? <laughs> um, the infrastructure is funny. Oh, here's the, the uh, fat man, as the game calls him. He looks great to me, to be H. Um, yeah, the seeds of a, of a really interested time-oriented mystery are here, but the reason that I love the game is, while it's easily broken, I'm, I'm definitely experiencing the tension between uh, wanting to explore this lovely ski resort and uh, trying to follow these people around and figure out um, what it is they've done. Let's see, as we wind down our time here together today, what else there is to do? You're facing north between a bar. Oh, uh, there's a, a dumb waiter. Here's Renee as well. Um, looks like they're hanging out together. Uh, I wonder if eventually uh, we'll be able to figure out who they are and why they're here. He doesn't seem to be carrying anything. Oh, Renee heads to the north. Let's just follow them. They don't seem to mind. Um, you know, I, I promised you more, more swimming pools. I, I wanted to get a, a tram pass for us. We see a bartender. A blonde woman heads to the north. A fat man heads to the north. Um, Perhaps we could just order a drink since we're at the bar. At a bar, we type drink, and it says, That wasn't very clear. Well, friends, in today's day and age, very little seems clear to us. Um, so I think the bar of a fantasy ski resort in a primitive nonsense environment from 1985 would be an ideal place for us to say goodnight tonight. Um, I want to thank you so much, uh, especially our Patreon backers, um, for making it possible for me to uh, make time to do these videos together with you. Um, it's been a great source of strength and healing that, um, you know, retreating into these worlds together is a way that I can, you know, keep surviving in this world. And I hope that I can, you know, do my part to convey a little bit of that sense of strength and survival and joy to you as well. Um, There'll be more lo-fi let's plays. Um, let's look at things that are beautiful and things that are strange and things that are old um, at times when we want to gather strength to um, face the larger adventure ahead of us. Um, thank you so much for your time. I hope you enjoyed this latest episode of lo-fi lo let's play. If you'd like to become a backer, please go to patreon.com Lee Alexander. Every donation helps. Um, and if you are unable or disinterested in becoming a backer, that's fine too. Um, today we're using a brand new Blue Yeti microphone that was purchased. Um, well, I purchased it thanks to the fact that you now back me on these videos. I've, I've reinvested um, the money from the first video right back into new features for the microphone and like the microphone and I hope to be able to continue doing stuff like that um, with your support so that we can keep enjoying more of this stuff together. Um, I'm on Twitter at Lee Alexander although I'm not on Twitter much at the moment so um, if you need to reach me um, <laughs> keep me in your heart. Uh, thank you so much for your support and uh, again special thanks to the backers for making this possible. Hang in there friends.